What's up guys, Lego here with Dyna Demos, and today I'm gonna to be working on my 87 FXR. I'm gonna be doing an SNS carb rebuild. So please, if you like the video, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. All right, guys, let me tell you the reason I'm doing this SNS car rebuild. So I got this bike a few months back while I was on deployment. I was on a six month deployment to Japan. And for those of you guys that are in the military, it still counts. <laughs> Some of you guys will get that. But anyways, yeah, I bought this bike uh, from the Dyna dude on Instagram. I'll put his handle up here so you guys can see. Uh, reliable dude he made the purchase like super easy and yeah it was just dope uh, he got it shipped to me uh, while i was over there so it sat for about four months in my garage and it never got started uh, he sent me pictures of it running and stuff and i actually did get it to run uh, what i did was uh, as soon as i got back i completely drained the tank and i put new fuel in there uh, and then I was kind of lazy and I just tried to start it and it ran, I got it to run, I rode it, but it kept dying on me. And then I was like, you know what? I probably just need to rebuild the carb. So I'm gonna do that. But yeah, just checking it out real quick. Cause I know I haven't shown you guys this thing very much. Pretty dope bike. So this isn't gonna be a straight up how-to video because there are so many how-tos out there uh on these bikes and just the sns rebuild in general uh, i watched a few videos so i'm by no means an expert uh the removal is pretty simple as is any removal um just because it's easier to like break something and tear it apart than it is to put it back together so watch a few videos i'm basically an expert um my idea for this uh, series is just going to be the entire building process of my FXR. It's by no means going to be how to's. It's more likely just going to be following the process. It's more or less just going to be a series of getting this thing back in the fight and uh, getting it uh, to be a runner. So yeah, check it out. Hopefully you guys like this. This is going to be episode one and I already got some goodies to throw on. So after I get it running, I am definitely gonna be start throwing those things on, so check it out, uh, and then hopefully you guys follow this uh, series. Uh, I'm not gonna call it a build, I'll just call it an assembly of the FXR, you know, because I don't want anybody to get offended. So check it out. I'll probably just time lapse most of this because all it is is gonna be taking off the uh, intake and the uh, carburetor, so check it out. Okay guys, so I already got the intake off. Um, this is the actual SNS carburetor. So fun fact, um, yesterday when my bike was running like crap, um, I thought that this was the idle screw. Come to find out this actually mixes in uh, more fuel if you adjust this. So I was completely adjusting the wrong thing. The idle screw is actually back here I'm pointing to it. Hopefully you guys can see that if it's focused. It's right back here anyways. Um, oh, we had somebody stop by. What's your name? Finn. All right, we're going to check out his bike. I can't show him the apartment complex. I don't want them to know where I live. Dang, this thing is dirty. Sheesh. All right, what bike is this? 2020 Lowrider S. All right, Vinny's a little camera shy, so we're just gonna check out his bike. 2020 Lowrider S, uh, inverted front end. Obviously that comes stock, and it comes with the poop brown rims, which are pretty gay. That's whatever. But he put a thrashing pipe on it. That thing's pretty dope. What kind of baffle do you have in it? Do you have like their weird one? The dog ball. Yeah, the dog ball baffle, if you look in that, looks all crazy. I think they're made by Basani, but thrashing, it's like thrashing brand. It's pretty dope. 
They come with a full fender too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's got a full fender, saddleman. Oh yeah, you got the uh, uh, power vision though. And this is from KNS Customs, right? The faceplate? Yeah. yeah. Faceplate from KNS Customs. That's pretty dope. Um, and then the gauges up here too. So the gauges come stock down here, but you got those switched out. You need the flush mount. Uh, I told you that yesterday. <laughs> Oh yeah, you got the rear and the front crash bar. That's day two. So I got the carb off. This is that new carb delete that they're uh, talking about. I got the intake manifold. So right here, I got the Super Super E S N S carb. Uh, today I'm going to be breaking this down, so I'll bring I'll be bringing you guys some more crappy angles. I got the uh, SNS rebuild kit right here. It's like $45 at a local shop, so that's pretty dope. Now we're going to start. So like you can see, I got all the internals for like the bowl right here. Um, you guys see it on time lapse. This is the uh, the float inside of the bowl. This is the actual bowl for the carb. And then here's like the main part of the carb. But it's all broken down. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean everything using, boom, chem tool. This was uh, recommended to me by the dude at the local shop. So I'm gonna use this, uh, I'm not gonna film it. All I'm gonna do is spray off all these components and I'm just gonna wipe them all off, make sure they're nice and clean and then I'm gonna put everything back together. <clears throat> then I'm gonna put everything back together. So that's the next step. All right guys, so check it out. I got everything cleaned using that chem tool carb cleaner. Uh, all I did was spray it all over then wipe it down with some uh, paper towels i don't know maybe should have used lint freeze but whatever everything's cleaned up everything on this paper towel i'm gonna reuse all of that got cleaned up i didn't really care about cleaning the hardware because it's on the outside this is a drain plug um but check it out so over here uh you have a little diaphragm thing and you got a bunch of o-rings you got a few springs you got a spring there a spring here and then I forgot what they called this, but um, in the kit, it comes with all that stuff. So I'm not even worried about cleaning this stuff up. Um, I'm just gonna end up tossing all this stuff away and using the new stuff that came in the kit. It also came with um, this rubber hose, which I need to look up and see why it came with this, cause I'm not sure, um, but I'm gonna look that up now and then I'll get back to you guys. All right, guys, uh, this is the line that I was talking about that it came with. Still not sure what it's for. I was trying to look it up, but I didn't really care because I took the whole carburetor apart. Did not use any tubing like this. The only thing I can think of is maybe this line, which I believe is just a drain line. So I'm not even going to worry about it. If my bike blows up, you know why I didn't install this. Whatever. <laughs> cool so now that we got the carburetor fully built i don't have any extra parts laying around just uh what it came with the rebuild kit there's all the old parts and then i got this gasket for the uh, air cleaner so now i'm going to throw this bad boy on who wants to take bets and see if this uh fxr is going to start or not i'm kind of nervous we'll f we'll find out 
All right, guys, so I got the carburetor fully on. Um, I thought it was gonna be a lot easier than it was. Um, I ran into some issues just because I had questions about certain things, which I'll go over. Also, I figured out what that clear plastic line is for. It's just an overflow. If the uh, float doesn't shut off the uh, bowl with fuel, then all the fuel gets discharged out this line. So that's what that is. Uh, I hooked up the idle and the uh, speed cable and they're there. I just need to adjust those. That's the only thing left besides actually putting on the uh, intake and the air filter. Uh, but I'm gonna wait to do that until after I get done um, putting fuel in it and everything. So uh, I'm gonna make sure it runs before I do that. Um, then hooking up this line back here, if you see that, I had a question because there's another place right here where it looks like a line goes, but um, there wasn't a line. So I looked back in the video and I was just going crazy because I couldn't figure it out. Uh, so I looked back in the video and I didn't have anything hooked up to it. So if you know what that is, please let me know. I have no idea. And then I uh, just got everything else hooked up. So last thing is go get fuel, uh, adjust the idle cables, and then that's it. And then we'll see if this thing runs. Who wants to take bets? So as you guys can see, I got it running. Uh, it's running a little funky right now. It keeps kind of sputtering, but my original issue was it just completely dying when I was at lights and it even died a few times while I was riding it. So this sputtering, I think may just be an adjustment issue on the carburetor uh, because what I did was I adjusted the carburetor to the uh, neutral position uh, for when it ran and actually I don't notice any sputtering right now but uh, basically what SNS says is set it to the neutral setting and your engine will start which it did I just had to uh, run it a few times because uh, anytime you crack a fuel system what you got to do is uh, it's called priming the fuel system so all the lines and stuff will be empty and what you got to do is you got to get all the air out of there so i ran it a few times um got all the air out of the system and then bike started right up i'm riding it uh, i noticed just that little sputtering like i said and then it idles really high but what i'm doing is i'm riding to the gas station i'm gonna get gas uh, i'm gonna go back the bike will be warmed up and then they say to adjust the idle around a thousand rpms so that's what i'm gonna go do uh after i get gas uh when i go back to my house i'm gonna adjust the idle um but as you guys can see i'm pulling up to the stoplight right now it's idling super high but the bike isn't dying um so what i need to do is just go back adjust the idle to like a thousand and 
then then it should be good uh what they said is like when people adjust their idle uh in the video that i watched that sometimes they adjust it super low because they want that like loping sound that you get from a cam um but they don't recommend going super low because i guess you lose some power i think in this set in the bottom end i kind of took that turn wide um so i'm just going to adjust it where they recommended a thousand i'm just going to get gas here real quick guys so what i'm noticing right now is after my bike's warmed up it's honestly it's running pretty good um it's idling at 2k rpm right now which is pretty high uh compared to the thousand that it recommends um but this is why i rode out because they said make sure you get your bike warm before you're adjusting the idle so you actually know where it's set to uh so when i go back home first thing i'm going to do is adjust the idle screw and uh after that i'm done for the night took it on its maiden voyage uh sorry about the wind i gotta get used to moto vlogging again uh anyways like i was saying uh i'm done for the night i might make this the first video this may be the second video i kind of want to do a walk around first but honestly maybe i should just drop this as the first video because you know i had to do a lot to get it running uh my first video though i wanted to do a walk around but you guys uh i feel like such a such a, a sense of accomplishment like getting this thing to run uh honestly i almost took it to a shop in san diego it's called cycle visions they're the one that sold me the rebuild kit just because when I got back from deployment, uh, I was like, man, I don't want to freaking spend all this time working on my bike. But I'm glad that I did. Uh, and shout out to those dudes. If you're in San Diego, I recommend that shop. That dude was straight up like, I was like, hey, yeah, this is my issue. Um, it's, it's dying when uh, it's idling. I let it sit for four months. I drained the tank, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yep, rebuild, rebuild the car. Like before anything, he's just like, yep, rebuild the car. He's like, I can do it at $95 an hour or you can just uh you could just try it yourself and he's like but honestly if you want me to do it I'm not going to be able to get you in until like next week and then he's just like just give it a try um and that's what I did and yeah dude's awesome you know that shop I don't think that shop would ever rip you off uh that guy was super honest um and he gave me a header bolt or a header nut for free uh because i was like oh shit i need this for my dyna um so yeah anyways going back to my place now gonna adjust the idle and then i'm out and that is the end of this video so please if you guys like the video please make sure you guys like comment and subscribe it really helps out the channel and now that i'm back from deployment i'm gonna be trying to drop at least a video a week uh got to get back on the grind it's been about a year since we dropped our last video just because i've been deployed and uh rod's been super busy uh with his family and then um just with the job both of us are in the marine corps you know so yeah super excited to be back and posting again and got a new project uh, i'm not gonna call this a build like i said just because i don't want people to get all uh mad that i call it a build so because I'm not going to cut the frame or anything. So I'll just call this a uh, FXR assembly. But now I'm just rambling on. Please make sure you guys like, comment, and so If you guys like the video, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.